Okay, now we want to talk about processes which can cause transportation of material or uh, deposition of material or erosion of material. So when we talked about rivers, we said a river could erode, transport, and deposit uh, by various means. So these are going to be the various means by which an ocean can do the same thing. So the first mechanism is going to be the tides. So what do I want you to know about the tides? Okay, it's caused by the gravity of the moon pulling unequally on the earth. So that if I was to ask you to draw the tides, you should be able to make a bulge on both sides of the earth. So this should be symmetrical, this bulge on both sides of the earth and then put the moon over here. So the gravity of the moon pulling on the water, pulling on the earth, pulling on the water causes these bulges to occur. And then because the earth is rotating, so the earth would be rotating like this, so this would be the spin axis of the earth, so because the earth is rotating it makes it seem uh, like these bulges are traveling around the Earth. But in actuality, the bulge is staying put, and it's the Earth that's rotating out from underneath it. So that's the reason why you have two high tides uh, uh, and two low tides per day. Okay, then uh, in a previous episode, uh, we talked about what causes weather and we mentioned the Coriolis force. So what do you need to know for purposes of the exam is that because the earth is spinning it will cause wind systems to bend to the right in the northern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere it makes them bend to the left. So if a wind is trying to travel in this direction that wind will be pulled off course by the Coriolis force and that Coriolis force is caused by the spinning of the earth. Okay, so that's all that you need to know for it. So why do we need to know about the Coriolis force is because that's what causes the global wind systems. Okay, why do we need to know about the global wind systems? Because the global wind systems as they blow across the surface of the ocean, it will cause the surface of the ocean to move. And so those will be the surface currents. Okay, so a good test question would be, what causes surface currents on the surface of the ocean? But you also have underwater currents. So you have deep ocean circulation and so this is going to be caused by differences in the density of the water and differences in the temperature of the water. So the more dense the water is, the dense water is going to go down. Remember, lighter, um, less dense materials float on top of more dense materials. So if water gets dense, and that could be because uh, it's got a lot of salt in it, that could make it dense, it's going to want to go down. But on the other hand, if water gets warm, it's going to want to go up. So convection is going to cause that water to want to go up. Well, the combination of these two things makes these uh, global ocean currents that uh, circulate around the Earth. Okay, you should also have, uh, this is a definition type thing. What do we mean by ocean upwelling and what do we mean by ocean downwelling? And you should know what causes it and then you should also know what's the consequence of it. So when water is upwelled, it can bring nutrients with it. And then those nutrients can feed fish. So upwelling is a good thing for fish. It can also affect the climate so that if you got cold water that's coming up to the surface, well then that's going to cool down the air. 
so it can it can affect climate this ocean upwelling and downwelling okay then we talked about what ocean waves were so you need to know what the wavelength of a wave is you should know what a crest is what a trough is and what the amplitude of a wave is and then what determines the size of an ocean wave okay the wind speed so the greater the wind is that's blowing across the surface of the ocean the greater the waves are going to be the length of time the wind has blown so the longer the wind blows across the surface of the ocean the greater the ocean waves are going to be and then the front the, the the distance that the wind is blowing so the further that the wind blows across the surface of the ocean again the greater the waves are going to be and then you should also know that waves can interfere with each other so you could have a wave that's coming from this direction and a wave that's coming from this direction and then when they come together they can make an extra tall wave and then they go right through each other so that you can have waves coming from multiple directions caused by multiple storms in the Pacific Ocean and then that's the reason why the Pacific has all of these different size waves to it okay now if you were a, a fish and you're you're in the water if you are up near the surface of the water you're gonna be jostled around by the ocean waves but notice that the deeper you go into the water the less the water is moving around and so by the time that you get down to that wave base down there at the bottom notice that the water is no longer moving so if you are a fish if you're below the wave base there could be a storm up here but you wouldn't notice because you're below that wave base and that wave base the depth to the wave base is one half of the wavelength so you take the wavelength the distance between a, a crest and another crest divide that by two and then if you're any deeper than that you wouldn't even notice that there's any wave action going on now why is this important because as a wave approaches the shore then the distance between the top of the water and the ground down here is getting getting smaller and smaller and smaller so eventually it the the bottom of the ocean floor corresponds to the wave base and then as it gets smaller and smaller what's going to happen is the wave is going to crest when that happens and so that's going to make uh, ocean waves lap onto the shoreline okay one last thing so we will now talk about uh, different kinds of shorelines and shoreline features